we're in a, a trap. And uh, that to, to solve this problem means we have to have some very, very serious discussions. And I don't see that happening. I'm, I see guarded positions. Everybody's self-interested in their own state. The Colorado River is the lifeblood of the Southwest. We depend on it right here in the Coachella Valley. In a new sweeping series, Troubled Waters, Colorado River Crisis, Morning Anchor Angela Chen explores how the fight over water is only getting more intense. Tonight in part one, Into the Wild West, Angela shows us why it is crucial to understand the past to handle the present controversy. In the sun-split desert of the Coachella Valley, life here is only possible with water from elsewhere. The water that grows our food, the water we drink, the water we exist around come from the special aquifers below and the Colorado River. All right, hold on, lean in. But the river is now in crisis, and as one environmentalist are you'll hear from puts job? it, we are on a train headed for a cliff. And to understand how we got here, we have to travel to Colorado and back in time. It is an ancient beast of current and flow, birthing life and legend in our nation's history. The dreams came first, and then our creator Mataville created the sky and the earth. These are wild waters nourishing Native American tribes since time immemorial. A fickle thing that forced tribes to move when the river dried up. But for all its mystery and formidable force, its headwaters at the Lapoudre Pass Lake in Colorado start with a quiet tune, nearly imperceptible. Streaming softly before crescendoing downstream in its 1,450-mile journey. Mighty Colorado! I traveled with my intrepid photographers, Tim Kiley and Kent Kay. We're prepared for anything. From the Coachella Valley to Colorado, following the path of the river in an old RV, loaded with 500 pounds of equipment. Hiking the mountains. It's beautiful, and it's extremely quiet. I think I'm the only thing for miles making any noise. <laughs> Occasionally jumping in to understand the impact of the water on the southwest. The Colorado River winds its way through several states, including California, as well as Mexico, before flowing into the Gulf of California. Recorded history shows Native American tribes began distributing water and forming societies around it in 600 AD. The water is in our DNA. These are ancestral lands for us. They have the oldest rights to the Colorado. But the way of the water was uncharted, and it wasn't until the 1800s, as the gold rush roars on, that one expeditionist runs the rapids to put it all on paper. Most of the river, most of the basin, was marked on maps for a long time as the Great Unknown. And it wasn't until 1869 when John Wesley Powell and his band of merry men um, floated the river uh, that white America got insight into what was down in these canyons. Giving us the beginnings of a map. Around the same time, something monumental happens in the legal world. A developer from San Francisco, Thomas Blythe, makes a move. In 1870, he, he did secure the very first water rights. That gave California the most senior water rights along the river. Blythe, for whom the town two hours east of us was named, is the first to file for rights, making California legally first in line for river water. He paves the way for Imperial Valley to file in the 1870s. Those rights and trusts are owned by Imperial Irrigation District, or IID, the largest user along the Colorado to this day, at 20% of all the water to provide irrigation to farms and drinking water to San Diego and LA. This all becomes incredibly important later. In 1905, the tempestuous river breaches a levee. They had so much snowpack, so much runoff, that broke whatever levee they had, 
and then it flowed for two years into the Imperial Valley, creating the Salton Sea. The floods that created the Salton Sea, 1905 to 1907-ish, right, there was a real push for controlling and taming the Colorado River. But to do that, there had to be rules on the river. Representatives from seven states come together to sign the Colorado River Compact, creating the law we still follow today on how to divide and deliver water to each state with a seniority system in place. To do so, they grouped the states into the upper basin and lower basin. And the idea was that you'd divide the river at Lee's Ferry and each basin would be allocated approximately 7.5 million acre feet. One acre foot is one foot of water above one acre, about the size of a football field. It's enough water for two average households for an entire year. And it's hard to fathom the power of this river and how it's moved across the centuries. But if there's one thing we know, it's that if a thing has power, man will try to tame it. In 1931, construction begins on the Hoover Dam to control the flooding of the river so something like the creation of the Salton Sea never happens again. And to provide water to the people and farms of California. The thunder of man's determination to conquer the Colorado. It is an engineering sensation. Workers built a dam so massive that it spanned a canyon 60 stories high to contain the force of the Colorado. It became a real symbol for the ingenuity and resilience of America in the face of hardship. To this day, the Hoover Dam stores the water going to Arizona, Nevada and California. And in 2000, our decades-long drought begins, which brings us to our current predicament. Remember in 1922 when the Colorado River Compact was created? Well, that year was a particularly wet year, and legislators divvied up the water based on river levels then. And that is where we went wrong. We have allocated more water in the basin than there is actually physically water. Lawmakers back then decided 15 million acre feet was the magic number and divided up the water based on that. But we now know in any given year, the river only gives us around 12 million with climate change hurting water supply. For too long, we have been trying to take more than the river is giving and someone always ends up getting shorted. This is a train headed for a cliff. So as passengers of this train, uh, maybe we should think about changing who's in government, who they appoint to manage their resources. I mean, are they doing a good job? Critics say water has been mismanaged by those in power in all states, rooted in a system that assumes we can always engineer more water even when we don't have it. Major cutbacks have to be made. But the thing is, no one wants to give it up. After all, water is life and money. But if no one can come to an agreement, then the life we've become used to in the West might shrivel, eroded by forces beyond our control. In Colorado, Angela Chen, News Channel 3. And next week, Angela will be taking a deep dive into the water rights along the Colorado River and why an agreement made more than 100 years ago is leading to this fighting today. Head to KESQ.com to see behind the scenes clips, unexpected scares, and the journey that Angela and our team took to capture this story. And this series was supported by the Water Desk. That's an independent journalism initiative based at the University of Colorado Boulder's Center for Environmental Journalism.